So we're here at the CES 2019, hi. Hi, I'm Chris Bignall from Planet Computers, uh, and this is Yanko. Hey. Hi, you've seen me before. So this is a big next step right here, you're showing a uh, screen. Yes, yeah, so we're showing the, uh, the outside screen of the Cosmo Communicator. So this is what we're showing at CES. It's our Cosmo Communicator outside. Uh, th this is the uh, AMOLED screen, so you'll see very nice uh, contrast. Uh, it's a kind of a two by one screen uh, and uh, showing you a part of the demo of the user interface. This is a really advanced Cosmos. user interface. There's a lot of things happening already. Yeah, so we're you know we're happy to be able to do that because we only signed the contract with the uh, manufacturing you know in uh, December. So to show this uh, uh, month in, I think it's really nice to see some progress. But it's a mock-up UI, right? It's not uh, functional it's, yet. It's a mock-up, but it's the real screen. Okay, so it's the real screen, and uh, you'll probably be um, seeing something very similar on the final product. You really think you can have all these kinds of functionalities working? Uh, absolutely, absolutely. So you what are you, can you, can you uh, illustrate what's going on? So, what the, is key, going so, on so the key part here, this is a call in progress. This is actually looking at recent calls. This is the time. Uh, and then you, you can also look at things the in up. the horizontal mode. So you can see this way, again, the time. Nice. Uh, you can see the uh, notifications coming in. Nice. And then, uh, you know... Can you touch it on the notifications? Uh, you, you can scroll and touch the notifications and then you'll go to the appropriate uh, message, something like this. And then you can do particular actions. And if you cannot do it on the outside screen, it will tell you to open up the device. And then you open it up? Uh, and, and then, then you can open it up. We have one which is... Uh, yep. so, so then it has all open this it up, there. And this is still showing the old OS, but it will be Android 9 on the Cosmo and uh, all our lovely apps and our famous keyboards so and that's kind of P70 so yeah the processor is P70 uh, it's the MediaTek processor 8 core uh, it's pretty fast it's about 50% faster than the Gemini in terms of speed performance uh, there's uh, 128 gigabytes of storage and there is a uh, 6 gigabytes of RAM minimum we're, uh, yeah so we're supporting uh, uh, Android 9, uh, Sailfish, and Linux, uh, and hopefully we'll have all of those available out of the box. Nice. So and this is what we're. And how's the crowdfunding going? Yeah, the crowdfunding's been absolutely fantastic. I mean, right from the start of the the launch of this product, it's been absolutely incredible. Uh, we we zoom straight through the uh, one million dollar mark. Uh, we're still looking to crowdfund more. Uh, but I would like to say a huge thank you to everybody who has supported us so far. And um, please keep going to Indiegogo and searching for Cosmo Communicator and keep supporting the product. So uh, $1 million funding allows you to do this, uh, allows to do all the mass manufacturing. So, you know, typically you know that roughly to start to make a phone, we probably need about $2 million. But don't forget the Gemini campaign has reached uh, already two and a half million. And with the Cosmo, we're already at over a million. So again, thank you for all the support. And you know, we are we are counting on the support. And I think uh, you know things are progressing very well at the moment. So, so this will be uh, right here a fingerprint reader. So this is an answer button. So it will be like a toggle switch for uh, answering the call, stopping the call. And in the middle, there is a fingerprint sensor under the glass. High quality, high good. good fingerprint scanner yeah it's a, it's a it's a fingerprint sensor i don't know the specifics but basically i think it will be very good quality and uh, basically will allow you to uh, unlock the device so even when you open it you can unlock it from this know? side or that side so you can have your finger this yeah, way yeah. or that this way this depends how you scan it in yeah. but basically you can unlock it you might unlock it with the thumb just to do some actions on this screen and also uh, you know if you're just taking a photo you don't need to unlock it because as i think we discussed uh, we, you know, you can, you can just take a photo. You're not giving out any information. You're just putting information in. So, uh, in here you see, you know. Can you use it as a selfie screen too? Yes, you can. You can use it as a selfie, and when open, you can use this button as a zoom, as a zoom. So that is kind of. Uh, and uh, you're reaching uh, here to CES. You can reach all kinds of uh, distributors, uh, partners around the world. So we're talking to our distributors. We're also meeting our Japanese distributor here. Uh, you know, in Japan we have uh, quite a lot of interest and support and now we're in the shops in Japan in uh, Yodabashi camera and big camera. 
So we're in the biggest shops in Japan. Akihabara Street. There is some of them are in Akihabara. That's absolutely true. It's probably one of the coolest things you can do in Akihabara Street is find a, a Gemini PDA. Oh, that's today. Yeah, today and in the future it will be the Cosmo, right? I think I think it's very it's very nice. It's very nice, and uh, we, it looks like we sold out now. After we launched on the Emperor's birthday in Japan, and we already sold out, so we're shipping some more units to Japan. Nice, and uh, the Japanese keyboard is great. Uh, they're very happy with the Japanese keyboard, right? Yeah, so actually the keyboard was a US keyboard and a Japanese power supply, but uh, we're also going to be having some other keyboard with the Kana, Kana keyboard as well. And uh, is it going to be a big challenge to have all kinds of uh, APIs and stuff for this screen? What is the size of the screen? So the screen is, I think, 520 by 240. Okay, so it's a... Uh, um, it's Hi. kind of like a two by one, roughly two by one screen form factor. Actually, it's quite high density for this uh, kind of two inch LED, uh, sorry, AMOLED. And, uh, but we, it, it's a custom display. So this part is completely custom. I know there were some uh, recent uh, messages about it being Android Wear. It's gonna be, obviously some functionality will be similar to Android Wear OS. But it's going to be a custom implementation. It so. has to be custom. Is there no chance you could pull in something from Android Wear or pull we're, in something we're, we're looking, maybe we're from looking Rebel at, OS, the open yeah, source? Yeah, Rebel. definitely pulling in some things. But uh, it will be a custom development, not, not nothing out of the box. But yeah, probably reusing some components. And um, the design of this new device also allows for better antennas. Yes, right? because you see the. Uh, so if you look at the Gemini. I'll just pull up a Gemini. So if you see the area, the plastic area was much smaller. Yeah. Which is only the top and the bottom. Yeah, exactly. So here uh, we have a lot more area to play mm. with in terms of, so there's an additional antenna on stronger, the device. And maybe uh, the stronger P reception. The P70 has better. Uh, so there's better radio. Also, so we'll, we'll, better have, radio. we'll have a support for the 600 frequency on T-Mobile, which is a, a must in T-Mobile in the US. Does that mean the G-Mini PDA is, is, is not so great in 4G here in the US? Uh, right. There are, so it's a, it's a newer modem on the Cosmo, and some frequencies, don't forget the X27 was designed already two and a half years ago, so there's some frequencies which have come in since then, like the 600 megahertz frequency in the US, and of course uh, this device will support it. So we're quite excited about that as well. But also when you're in Europe, you will get a stronger signal. There are three antennas, so that's a better, better signal. There's some technology that MediaTek has for using the best antenna reception. Yep. And we'll have three antennas now instead of two that were on the Gemini. Because the Gemini PDA, I've been using it constantly for eight months. It's been so fantastic. But uh, as a phone, this one will be better. Yeah, the modem right. is better, and also, and also the, the way to use it frequency management in the U.S. will be better. Because you will have the screen, and because uh, maybe it will be, let's say, somehow more stable as a phone? So, so I mean, it, it's stable. It's stable as a phone. Uh, Gemini is stable as a phone, but uh, the frequency support in the U.S. will be better here, and also the frequency support in Japan, because we're supporting bands like Band 19, uh, will be better. So you were saying that if you reached a million dollars, you were considering about the new CPU, and that was a consideration about the P90, right? Uh, and so why do you correct. choose the P70 well, or the we P90? Well, we chose the P70 because the P90 really has been majoring in AI functionality, but we still think that the CPU power um, is more uh, crucial for this type of device. So after evaluating it, including the costs and everything else, we decided uh, that we're going to remain with the P70. So the P70 uh, is actually more powerful than P90. Uh, okay, so the P70, if you're not using the AI processor or the GPU processor, uh, the actual main cores seem to us to be more powerful. And also the Mali is, is preferable over the... Well, I think there's also, for the Mali, there's a lot more software if it's directly supporting the GPU. Uh, there's more software support for it than the new... Imagination. G correct. So there might be some, some, uh, some uh, let's say, some different, different levels of support for it. But there was no chance. No chance you could have gone to Qualcomm, right? You had to be immediately. No, no we, we haven't planned to go to Qualcomm on this device. Because it's a whole new world to go and you, you already need to work with the designer a, and everything it's is a different matter. Yeah, it's a different matter having a different PCB 
with Qualcomm. Um, but uh, for this device, you know, for this device, we are we are very much uh, remaining on the MediaTek side. There might be, let's say, in the future, who knows? There might be a Qualcomm uh, uh, product from you in the future with Qualcomm, but then it would be good if Qualcomm come and, and help you, right? Yes. And I think, you know, we, we, we would be then looking to see what support we would get. It's because we're, the you know, you we've invested a lot in the yeah. MediaTek relationship yeah. and also invested a lot. It goes both ways, you know, we've opened up the kernel, we've opened up the bootloader um, on the Gemini. You know, people can develop, you know, uh, Kali Linux. Kali has announced uh, Linux uh, support for the Gemini, and we've, we've, you know, they just did it all themselves. Whereas we've done some work on Debian, and we've done some work with Sailfish. Uh, but let's say Kali has been a really an independent development. And they were able, they were able to get GPU acceleration for the Linux. I think so. Yes. And even though it's Mali, because one of the reasons to use a, why people might think that Qualcomm would be good for the Linux stuff is for the free green. No, GPU, we, right? we have GPU acceleration on Debian, uh, on Sailfish, and I think Kali has the GPU acceleration. Nice. All right. So, um, do you think is a good chance this could be more popular, more successful for you than the Gemini PDA? I think because of the outside screen, I think people who wanted a small pocket computer, I think the Gemini is a great machine. But people who want a, a, a phone device with a keyboard, sort of all-round, all-in-one device with a good camera, it will probably be more popular because it's an all-in, all-round device with a, with an integrated camera and an outside screen. So yes, we, we hope it will be more popular. Although the Gemini PDA and the Cosmo crowdfunding so far is very successful, uh, you still need uh, the, the perfect scenario is for you to sell many, many millions or big quantities. All over the world, and with many different carriers, many different all this stuff, right? Yeah, so this because is a better chance we'll yeah, succeed. Absolutely. With this, right? So with this device, uh, we hope to enter many more carriers and to enter many more markets because you know this is kind of our flagship device, and we think it will be uh, very popular.